Tough and powerful, yeah. Let me see. And sad, Pia. Yeah, okay. sad as the last night. That's not a bad complaint. Sorry, sorry, I'm still off camera. I was meant to log in from upstairs, but I, I will do shortly and then I'll be brave and have my camera. <laughs> You're all right. You're all right. You take your time. Okay. You take your time. It's fine. I'm, something. I'm multitasking, but I'm going upstairs shortly. No worries. No worries at all. No worries. Okay. So we are, I think, Leona, are we good? Are we live? Yeah, we sure are. All live on Facebook. Yep. Brilliant. All right. So um, emotions James triggered from the role play. I know. How brave was um, Tina? Yeah. And um, the collective girls will be glad, you know, the collective girls and guys be glad, you know, um, that Tina is joining us in the collective. So we'll see some more work being done inside the collective, which will be lovely for Tina and lovely for us to be witness to that. So um, brilliant. OK, so this is the end of our journey together. Um, it may not be. Some of you may continue the journey. Um, we'll talk about that at the end. Some of you may want to continue the journey. Some of you may want to continue working with me. We'll talk about that uh, at the end for you. And so I'll give you some information on that. And we can continue doing this every single month. And I'll give you the details about that. Some of you may be horrified at the very notion of it. And some of you may be, <laughs> Dion's laughing, and some of you may be excited about the notion of it, right? But this, in effect, is what you've, what you've seen here is what happens inside the collective. It's what happens inside our group program. So you may want to continue that journey, but I'll give you, we'll give you that information as we go. Um, my intention at the end of today is to pull everything that we've done together and then for you to work out where to go next, your own healing plan. So even if you don't come to the collective with us, even if you don't continue the journey, that at the end of this, that you'll have something tangible. You'll know where you're going. You'll know what you need to do. You'll have your finger on the pulse. There'll be no more searching around in the dark. That that was my in heartfelt intention in this so that we could literally lift the lid and you put your finger on what it is you need to do and so that you're not literally spiraling, which brings me to this. Um, so I'm just going to share this document with you. Um, and let us see. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Everybody see that? So this is where we have... We have been on this kind of spiral for, and that's what probably brought you here. We've been on this spiral of having primary pain, you know, moving around, doing the cycle, training, searching, procrastinating, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter what it is that you've been doing. You've been doing all of this. And then coming back to imposter because all of this was happening, coming back to this place of imposter because of this primary pain. So regardless of what you were doing on the outside, and, and what was really interesting last night, that many of these were saying the same things, hold myself back, constant CPD, constant supervision, constant training, constant searching, constant procrastination, constant whispering that I'm not enough. And the theme was exactly the same. It was in different words and different languages, different language patterns, different idolect. But it essentially was this, had, had the same thread. Did everybody see that in their colleagues? Did everybody see that everybody was doing the same stuff? And effectively what they were doing is that they were trying to heal from the outside and you were trying to heal this primary pain that was semi-unconscious, unconscious, from the outside in. Semi-unconscious or unconscious, but you were trying to heal it from the outside in. Now, why were you healing it from the outside in? Okay, so why do we get secondary pain? Why does secondary pain, why is secondary pain a function? Why does it happen? And we're going to go there and then we're going to go straight back and core wound, all right? And we're going to get into the detail of the core wound and how to heal the core wound and what the core wound, where the core wound, we're going to get really, I'm calling 
own colon, which is primary. Sorry, I use those words interchangeably. So sorry not to confuse anybody. So core wound, primary pain, same word, same thing, same issue. So why, why do we do this stuff on this? Why do we, why do we externalize our pain? What, what happens there? So I want to explain something. And the reason why I want to explain it is because I am hopeful, I am hopeful that it will start the shift away some of the shame of the secondary pain so that we can drop that aside. My experience, my so this witness consciousness that I have with this witness awareness can see the thinking mind, right? So I can basically see the see my own thinking mind, see the way that my mind behaves. And what was incredible and what is incredible about how the mind behaves is that the mind has a very specific job, right? It has a very specific role when it comes to pain. And it sources that pain, finds a solution to it that is never internal. Is everybody with me? So it sources the pain internally, finds a solution to that pain externally, identifies with that solution as a good idea, attaches good feelings to that solution, records that as the thing you do, associates that action as a good thing to do for this pain, regardless of whether it's good or it's not. If it associates it with a resolution of the inner pain, it'll just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, even though, even though you've pr proven loads of times that it's actually counterproductive, it'll not matter. And yes, David, false com comforts. And this is what I call the mind's functions. It's in every one of us. It's part of the human condition. It's called, some people call it the mind's malaise. There's been many spiritual books wrote on it, right? It is one of the biggest, what I call one of the biggest veils when it comes to therapeutic work. So the mind's functions will cover, will literally cover up the wounded parts of ourself in solution. It'll cover it up in story. It'll cover it up in meaning. It'll cover it up in understanding. And much of what is produced in the mind has really nothing to do with what's happening from a primary pain point of view. So the, that is the mind's job. We don't get to switch that off. We get to work with. We, we, there's no button that switches that off, right? That is how we are as human beings. It's part of our human condition. It's part of the way we are. But we do get to understand it. We do get to work with it. And I am hoping even this conversation means that you won't ridicule yourself for the choices that you've made in relation to the pain. And maybe you're going back to an empty well the entire time and you're getting nothing from it and you're getting exhausted from it. But it's only because at some point your mind has made this a solution to this problem. So even though you know the first CPT course doesn't do anything, even though you know those affirmations didn't do anything, you'll keep going back to try and source, uh, to source a solution externally. It's how the mind works. It doesn't try and source its problem internally. It doesn't try and source its solution internally. It tries to source its solution externally, which is why we do all these external things. It's fine. It's just the way we are. So all of that spiral that would have all of those spikes and all of those actions or all of those, all of the things that we've done that has caused the secondary pain is simply just because that is the way the mind is set up. And so what I'm saying to you all is, now that we saw the primary pain, now that we've had a wee look at it, and Tina, so how wonderful was that last night? Tina so wonderfully demonstrate because I can talk about primary pain all I want, but they see it in action. They, did you see the way the mind tried to protect itself by soothing out the primary pain? But you're okay, but but you can do it. Come on, do you see that? That's a mind's function as well. 
So if we're going to work in primary pain, there's a few rules to the game of working in primary pain. And if we're going to work in primary pain, we are going to, um, we're going to understand primary pain. Because if you're going to heal primary pain, then we have to understand it. We have to understand where it is, what it is, where it comes from. Yeah. And the reason that as an organization, as a company, um, that I am so focused on primary pain is because I had a lot, of, as you would imagine, from a lot of trauma, I had a lot of secondary pain. And I mean a lot of secondary pain. So I had a lot of actions. The mind, my mind, my mind's functions gave me, and I said this at the beginning, money, status, uh, houses, material solutions to the nothingness that's inside me. Is everybody with me? See, they were all the things that I would try and get, yeah? that I would try and gather and get to fill this nothingness. My mind was, it was brilliant at deciding that that was a great solution. If I had to try to let go of some of those things without healing the primary pain, I just would have moved on to something else externally. So the secondary pain that you're seeing the procrastination, the self-sabotage, whatever that looks like, the not believing in yourself, all of that stuff. If you try to track, tackle that individually, then it's like trying to chase ghosts because it'll pop up somewhere else. It'll reinvent itself because it's the function of the mind. It'll reinvent itself in another solution somewhere. So what I'm saying is, if you can, from this, just be primary pain focused for yourself, you will get further. Because what happens and what happened to me is once I was primary pain focused, all the secondary stuff fell away on its own. There was no need for it then. Now, did I, fall, did I wake up like Cinderella the next day in a full ball going delighted with myself? We know secondary pain. No, it doesn't work that either. But it did slowly fall away where, where you know, the mind is, is funny enough, when you do emotional healing work, the mind is the last to catch up. You know, we have a workshop coming on that, but the mind is the last to catch up. It's a wee bit slow. It takes its time. The body is healing. The mind thinks it's still in the same place. There's a wee bit of delay between the two. So, you know, I hope that kind of speaks and wraps up secondary pain and that we can make our peace with it and not get into a war with it and not get into a fight with it. Because if you get into a fight with secondary pain, you can try and go after it and heal it. You are going to create the wound and give the wound fuel. So park it, leave it, let it go. And so that's where we arrive now. Is that, how does that feel to everybody? Does that feel, does that feel like... Right? If you're holding on to secondary pain, you're here to gain on it for you. If you like a wee bit of procrastination or if you like a wee bit of self-sabotage, you might be getting some secondary gain from it. But, so, brilliant pain. Delighted it makes sense. Okay. So, let us look now at the, the primary pain itself. All right? We, we had a beautiful example last night. Um, and let's look at that as, a, as an experience. And Dion brought a very important uh, topic to bear as well. We can have primary pain that comes in memory, and we can have primary pain that comes in feeling. So that's the primary pain that comes in memory is the then pain. So we can work with that memory. We can work with the details of that memory when that primary pain comes. We access it through the body. Yeah, but it can often lead us back to memory that we've held or experience that we've held. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's just on the body without memory and that's fine as well. So that's the pain that I would call the now pain because it's here and it's in this now and it's in this body and it's in me and it's in my experience and it's, and it's here. And it doesn't have any attached memories, not that I'm working with, not that it's available to me. And that's what I call the now pain. 
And the then pain is the exact same feelings, the exact same sensations, the exact same experience, but it has memory attached. And it's exactly the same experience. If you remember when I asked uh, Tina last night, does the feelings today feel like the feelings then? And she said, yes, it's exactly the same. And that, that's really, really, really important that we, don't, that we don't just give up on primary pain because we don't have memory. Because the material is in the body. And if it's in the body, the mind will make sense of the material and that's all you'll need. All right, so because the reason I'm saying that is because what will happen then, the wound has new material to source from. See, you can't even find a memory. You can't even do that right. See, right? So let's, we're just being body led here. We're just being on the body. And if you can't get under the body, and I'll talk about options for people who can't get under the body, all right? If you're not in your body, if you're not connected to your body, if you, then you'll not be able to do the core wound at work, which is not a problem either because there's a way under the body that's safe. The reason that you're out of your body is because it's not safe. And you don't want to be forcing yourself into your body or, or doing or using it against yourself. That's not what this is about either. So if you're out of your body, core wound works really difficult. And, and we'll give you a solution for that at the end, right? And just as an interest, is there anybody, anybody else, anybody here who feels they're not connected to their emotional sense? Anybody here that's not connected to their body, not connected? Yes, Rebecca, brilliant. Okay, brilliant. Out of it completely. And that's all right, because there is a reason that you're out of your body, Jackie. Brilliant. Fantastic. Great stuff. So there's a reason that you're out of your body. So Carmen, brilliant. You know, it's very difficult to work in the material in the body. If, you're, if you have psychosomatic union, there's many reasons for psychosomatic union that I'm not going to get on. That's a whole other thing in itself. But I just want to speak to that before we get into the core wound. So we have secondary pain. We're not on the body for some of us, which is fine. But we're not using secondary pain against ourselves. And we're not using the fact that we don't have memory against ourselves. If we're in experience of the pain or if we're cut out from the pain, there's a way in. But if we're in experience of the pain, we're good. So. Yes, Helen, it does just take a long time, doesn't it, to get, un, to get under the body. Tracy, yeah, you're confused. And, or sorry, Carmen's confused. Yeah, you find it hard to differentiate between emotion. So you're half in and half out there, which is really good as well. Brilliant. Okay, so let us look at um, the, the example that I would have shared at the beginning, yeah? Now, work from this. I'm going to keep an eye in the chat. So ask all the questions you, you need to. So where does core wounds come from? Where does primary pain come from? They often come from experiences in life, in childhood, but not always in childhood. I'm going to contradict myself the way through this, right? They don't have to come from childhood. They can come from anywhere. Okay. They are traumatic to the person in the moment. Does that mean they're traumatic incidents? No. Does that mean they're aces? No. I dealt with a, a, a man who had... On this very principle, and this is why core pain is so important, so primary pain is so important. I dealt with a fella who had been unable to keep a job, worked with him, unable to keep, keep a job, unable to um, be in relationship, basically bed bound for most of his young adult life. Um, and who had, who had severe anxiety and severe depression and was, you know, really badly overweight and was just in a mire and had been in the system for years, um, absolute years, and they were medicating him to the nth degree, right? 
And when he arrived with me, um, he, he, he knew how he felt and he knew where he was, but he didn't have any big moments that were in his memory. He didn't have any trauma. He didn't have any childhood wounding that he knew of. He didn't have any great story to tell. He didn't have anywhere to hang his hat on why he was the way he was. And he spent many years looking for the big moments, looking for the big stuff in his mind, in his memory, in his, under, in his, in his thoughts, in his past. And all the while, the material that only needed to be worked with was in the body and the now. And in the body, in the now, was this feeling of depression, this feeling of, of, of nothingness. And underneath nothingness was this feeling of worthlessness. And in worthlessness, there was this understanding of his value in this world that came from key relationships, no incidents, no newsworthy incidents, no aces, nothing to see, but a load of feeling. Evidence in the felt sense. Does that make sense to everybody? And it was from that material, we began to work and heal and soothe and move. And that, that man is in a relationship for the first time, holding down a 60 hour job, training to become a nurse, right? I still have contact with him. Um, transforming his life, you know, had lost, had lost something like eight or nine stone. Why? Because all we did was work in the wounded part of the primary pain. We worked in the primary pain, which was, now, You'll understand I'm cutting short the story to keep, you know, to keep the fellow's identity tight and, and to be respectful. And there's a wee bit more story in underneath that, a wee bit more detail underneath that. It's not that simple either. I don't, I don't want to be, um, you know, I don't want to be smart about it. But, but fundamentally, it was on his body. There wasn't any great memories. But the feelings that he had towards himself were in his body. And that's all we needed to really work with. To release him, to heal him, to let him move forward. And all the primary pain, the secondary pain that came with that, which was the depression and the anxiety and the lethargy and the, all that secondary pain. And, and what happened was he, he reported working in secondary pain for years and years and years, working in anxiety, working in depression, working in, working in lethargy, working in motivation, going to a motivation coach. You know, and he was like, then oh, what was happening in the end is that secondary pain was just feeding the wound. It was just, look at his worthlessness was feeding back in itself constantly. So when we talk about a core wound, when we talk about primary pain, we are not talking about just newsworthy stuff. And this is where, this is where I think we've got it wrong in the mental health system, I think that we don't have a broad enough conversation about what it, take, what it takes for the human condition to be hurt, what it takes for it to be wounded, what it takes for it to take meaning out of something, what it takes for it to be shocked, what it takes for it to be hurt, what it takes for it to be. And it is in relation to the meaning that we make and the feelings that we have, what it takes for it not to understand or to misunderstand and to have that locked into ourselves. So the wounded parts of ourselves come from experiences that have been difficult, that have been painful, that have been moments in time where you have learned something about yourself or believed something about yourself or the world around you. When your body has, has betrayed you by responding in a nervous system way or where, where your body is overwhelmed with difficulty or where you can't process and stuff gets stuck or it's all of these moments it's the collectiveness it's the big stuff too i could write a book on big stuff right i could write a book on the big stuff 
I, you know, I came from six alcoholics in the one family, domestic violence, absent fathers, you know, um, sexual abuse, you name it, you name it and, and it's there. But my core pain, funny enough, wasn't attached to most of those big experiences, which is really interesting. It wasn't attached to the experiences themselves. So whether we have the full gamut of aces or whether we can find the aces, the body holds the detail of the pain and the secondary pain hold the mind's functions, the ways that we try to get out of it. And the secondary pain holds the information that should lead us back into primary. But in primary pain, this gets locked and it gets and it's locked under the body as truth. It gets locked under the body at a feeling level. And the experiences get locked in. And what normally happens is that we just roll on, we create more and more evidence for the experience, building it, feeding it, fueling it. Not consciously now. And and I could do two weeks talk about that, right? Not consciously, right? It's often unconsciously rolling and feeding under the wound and then by the time so the way that I like to describe that is say for example a young girl's father a, a child's father she's a girl she's a young girl say she's seven years of age her father leaves when she's seven the child learns that it must be her fault that she's unlovable that worthlessness, that, that worthless feeling is trapped in her body. It's what she believes about herself. So she moves along her timeline, having collated more information about her worthlessness by the time she's 14 in her first relationship. And so she chooses or she's in relationship with somebody and accepts very, very difficult behavior, accepts that she's worthless, doesn't matter how she's treated. And, and that pattern repeats itself until eventually she's in her thirties and married to somebody who's um, she's a severe domestic violence relationship. And she comes on and you examine her primary pain and her primary pain is worthlessness. And you try to work with that worthlessness. At that stage, she has lots of evidence for her worthlessness. She has that entire timeline locked under your body in relation to the worthlessness. This is why I spent two days talking about secondary pain. Don't let it feed your not enoughness. Don't let it feed it. It's the product of the primary pain. Don't allow it. Don't use it as evidence against yourself. Guys, girls, don't. It's the product of the mind trying to source the pain within. And if we're to get out of primary pain, then we absolutely have to begin to separate out the evidence of it. We're going to talk about more about that in a wee minute. So in this core wounded of experience, whether it's traumatic, it's be traumatic to me and that it's overwhelming for me the experience end of story big t tall t small t middle t i don't care right it has a very detailed language pattern it repeats itself talks the same language the entire time you hear it constantly it often has high frequency emotion attached to it so that means it's really heavy but the emotion is nearly the emotion is the same. It's the same feeling. I mean, if, you, if, if every one of these had to identify your core, your core wounded emotion, so use the chat for me. I haven't got used to use the chat in a while. I'm just busy talking, you dumping on you. Um, what emotion, where does that core feeling hit you first? Where does that primary pain hit you first? Where's the first feeling place you feel that in your body? Mine's was my stomach. Watch the chat. Stomach, heart, brilliant. Gut, brilliant. Stomach, stomach, gut. <laughs> Love it. Chest, brilliant, Jane. Solar plexus, gut. Brilliant. 
just look at that, guys. So there's a pattern to this stuff. Panic, brilliant, solar plexus. Rebecca, I want you to watch this next question, right? Because see that panic? That's your nervous system, that's not the wound. Chest, stomach, yeah, brilliant. No, you, right? <clears throat> What does your nervous system do? Does your nervous system respond to the wound? So do you go on to any sense of fight or flight? Do you go on to any activation? Fast chest, tight throat, sweating, panic. Now your nervous system shuts down, brilliant health. So we're talking about the, the nervous system activation, which is on this side. So it has a detailed language pattern, it has a high frequency of emotion, it hits you in a certain place, and your nervous system normally reacts, freeze and panic, right? How many of you have used your nervous system against yourself in this imposter syndrome business? How many of you have said, I behave like that, I can't breathe properly, I can't see properly, I can't think properly, I can't. How many have you used the nervous, the way the body responds to the wound against yourself? Yeah, well that. Again, not evidence of your imposter, not evidence at all. You saw Tina last night who was, who was sweating, who was, wasn't thinking straight, who was shaking, who was quiet, who, and that experience is just the experience of the child in the moment coming through in the body. But because you're doing this, you say to yourself, I'm an imposter, not trusting myself as a result. Yes, Sarah, I berate myself being weak after shutting down. Again, not evidence of your imposterness, imposter syndrome, not evidence of your weakness, evidence of a wound that is active. That's all. And not everybody that has a core wound will have a nervous system activation. But, but if core wounds are active and they haven't been healed, you will get nervous system activation because it's sore, because it's difficult, and, and it's the threat to the system. Right? And where you go in nervous system activation will depend on how well you were regulated as a child, will depend on whether you had uh, childhood trauma, whether you had childhood uh, woundedness, whether you had, sorry, not woundedness, childhood uh, nervous system activation. So if you have a fundamental childhood developmental trauma, childhood developmental trauma, depending on how far your nervous system takes you. Which is what Tammy was asking me today. Tammy, you were asking me about embarrassments. Can embarrassment lead to nothingness? Nothingness being disassociation. If embarrassment is anxious and you get on the anxious train, so if you get on the nervous system activation, if you get on that train, so if that happens in your body and you get activated in your nervous system, so say it's just fight or flight, just say it's the, it's the wishing. If that doesn't calm down, you can go directly then to uh, disassociation from that place, even though the original disassociation is nothing to do with. Tammy, I'll know what I'm talking about. Brilliant. I start to cry or feel like I want to cry. Yes, Dee. Yes. Yes. If you have a phobia, James, yes, your nervous system is an activation about something. And it's not necessarily the thing that's presenting itself. So I wonder, do we have, I don't think we do. I do think we have Suzanne here. Suzanne is here. Speak up, Suzanne. Suzanne had a phobia of heights that had nothing to do with heights. Work that one out. It was a primary pain that was being activated by the sensation of heights. So yes, the phobia is a nervous system activation. I feel like I want to cry. It's so common when the body's overwhelmed and the body cries, they release, they release um, the hormones, they release the overwhelm. Yeah, brilliant. Again, not evidence of anything. Do you see what I'm doing here? Can you see what I'm doing, guys? I'm clearing out the evidence that you've held against yourself. You are going to have a chance in hell, a chance in hell of healing this, and we have to start clearing the evidence. Good, Dion. Hope you had a good cry. Good, a good blubbering mess cry. Good, 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 good. Hells of one, two, good. Brilliant. 
brilliantly. You feel like it now, fabulous, brilliant, absolutely. Okay, so where have you ever come to a course for therapists who, where the therapist and the therapist is, is saying, brilliant, let's all cry, fabulous. Yay, let's all, let's all show our weakness. Let's not posture and pretend we're all fixed. Imagine that. Imagine you get a wee bit of this to be who you are. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant, David. Couldn't speak in public for work, Helen. Yeah, you lost your voice. Fantastic. Well, the voice is the first thing to go when the nervous system is activated. The throat is kind of really part of that nervous system activation. How many of us have used that against yourself? So when the primary pain is active, and then you'll have the defense system. So the defense system will be in it. Does everybody know what their defense is? So mine's with sublimation. I would jump quickly to make it work. Yes, Carmen. Brilliant. So your defense system is really important because that kicks in really quickly. Brilliant. I feel silly crying. Rebecca, you have an emotional... Really strong rapping. You see that, Hells? I get anxious about crying. I feel silly about crying. That's exactly what we were doing today. It's emotional mastery right there, Rebecca. Brilliant. Fantastic. All right. Absolutely brilliant. So now we're seeing the way that we behave in these wounds, right? Then there are two other pieces. And then you see the way I separated emotion, somatics, and physical because they're different. Physical, right, is the way that you hold yourself. Is that spelled right? Physical? I don't know. Um, physical is the way that you hold your somatics is the way the tension in your neck and the way, you know, it's it's the kind of outer edges of physical. And then physical can be just the way you hold yourself. I had a client once who was stuck at the developmental age of 14. And see the way she walked was that she was 14. See the way she talked was the way she was 14. See the way she held herself was the way she was 14, physical way of being. The wound is rode all over us. Literally rode all over us. So these are the ways, and then the world responds to the way of our being. And then we get more information. We're on a feedback loop constantly. Yeah, if it were on a feedback, feedback uh, Look constantly. So these are the ways in which the wound shows up. Now, the actual experience and the actual detail, and this is the hardest thing to get your head around, right? If everybody stays with me and then we'll, we'll ask some questions, I'll open up for Q&A and then we'll, this is the hardest thing to get your head around, right? And this is, this is my research, this is my work, right? That when the wound births, in this now, the mind takes the wound and sees it in this now. So the wound becomes something that's happening now. It doesn't happen 20 years ago, it's happening now. It's happening through this body, in this now, in relation to these people, places, and things. There is no separation. The mind doesn't, doesn't say this is a source from the past. It says this belongs in the now. And so it attaches itself to all the stories. And then what happens is we can't get under the experience of it because we're too busy protecting, projecting, sort blaming, pointing the finger. If they didn't do this, I wouldn't feel this way. I feel this way because there's so much information out there that tells me that I'm useless and worthless. Does that make sense, Steve? That's a really important piece of the puzzle. When the wound births in this now, it comes from a place that's not in the now, but it but it activates the mind like it's in this place today. And the mind attaches to itself, to everything that's around it and tells the story of it in the night. And then we get connected to the story. And for that reason, we never really check in to the body. Now you see where I'm going, guys, don't you? 
We never really check into the body for its source. What are we doing? We're externalizing it the whole time. We're playing the mind's game. Does that make sense? Does it? No. Any questions on that? Because that's a big piece of the puzzle. Because the way I'm telling it to you is, if this is about healing, then we need to get some separation. We need to see the wound. We need to understand its felt sense, its words. We need to understand what's happening. Even if we can't source it in the past, just even in the now, that'll give you separation. Does that make sense? If you, when it comes up, if you can say, oh, I know what you are, rather than, this is true, this is real, this is happening, this is now, this is, this is absolutely solidly true and it's coming from them, it's, it's because of this, it's because of that, that you're getting some separation. The only way you can get separation from that wound is by knowing its, by knowing its movements. By knowing its language. By knowing how it whispers, by knowing how it starts, by knowing its felt sense. And when you get so confident and up, not confident, but when you get so clear about it, that actually is the beginning of undoing it. So that it can't puppeteer you anymore. It can't bully you. It can't pretend it's in this now. You can't, you know exactly where it sources. If anybody, any questions on that? And the reason that I'm showing it to you now is because it's part of your healing journey. Separation. The separation. I, I work with clients who, and Michael's not here. If Michael was here, he would tell you. I've worked with clients. And I think it might have said at the beginning, of, it feels like it was 20 weeks ago I've met you, so uh, forgive me. Um, I work with a client, right, who had said, had come up and he was so activated. He was activated in anger. So anger is a very hard, you know, if, if it's very hard to hold anger. Anger is not, not celebrated in our culture, in, in, in the world. And so if you're activated and your nervous system acts or not your nervous system, but your wound acts and anger and frustration and annoyance. And he was saying to me at the beginning, I cannot see how I won't get activated. I can't see how I get separation. Sometime later, separation in the middle from the activation, so longer periods of time. We talked about Will Smith, who was activated. Will Smith was activated. He had no time between when the wound burst and, and his actions. There was no regulation. There was no understanding. It was just pure activation. So we want to be able to create space between the wound, its striking, and us believing it. That's the first stage of healing. So the healing core wounds is exactly that understanding them first and I mean intricately felt sense understanding the detail of them understanding the language of them understanding and like Tina did last night understanding its source Shona can I ask a question please if the thing that created the trauma as a child yes. has left a trace of a thing that could very real, could happen in the future. Yes. And that because it's to do with an old age image and a thing that, it was an advert that, it was an advert that traumatized me as a child. Yes. Of an old woman slumped dead yeah. with a cat licking her milk bottles on the doorstep to bar fire and she'd basically frozen to death now as i'm saying that now i'm being i'm being activated yeah but as i'm getting older it's feeling even more real because i don't feel that i've created any security any finance i never thought about pension 
So I've not got a social network around me. So the older I get, the more real that threat feels, even though I can rationalize it, I can look at it. It's still with, and I've been jotting down, I'm stupid. I should have seen it coming. Why didn't I plan? What's wrong with me? That is going to be me. And it lights me up. Brilliant. So the wound's not healed, Julie. So it's a childhood developmental trauma that may have come to play in relation to other things that were happening. Not just in relation to this ad, but this ad did the damage. But it's a, it's a and, it, and it sounds as if it's the nervous system that was really badly activated. There's a huge fear. Am I understanding that? Yeah. Right. But if it's linked to, can you see right? It seems to be linked to the future because we are going to, well, I am going to get old. Yeah. That's <laughs> I might starve mind. to death. I might freeze to death. I might, you know. Yeah, and Julie, that's your mind's function. What if? Yeah. That's the part of anxiety that says, what if? What if this happens? What if this happens? It's you project in the future to protect yourself from that happening. Even though you're doing nothing about it, which you give yourself a hard time about, right? So that's what the self, that's what the imposter is. Like, I know this, but I'm doing nothing. I'm, I'm doing nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm a stupid. What, what, I should be protecting myself from it. That's you externalizing, absolutely externalizing this wound that hasn't healed, that keeps shouting. They keep shouting, they keep shouting, they keep shouting, they keep shouting. Now, does that mean that you should abandon all, you know, actual <laughs> protecting yourself for the future? No, it doesn't. But it means that that wound's active. But you're in the anxiety course. Why don't we work with it? Because there, that, see that piece of the puzzle there? That's really important. If you were to love without that, what would it be like? In a way, that's primary pain too. It's, it just, it's just developmental uh, nervous system activation. But if you were to love without that, what would, what would it be like? I think I, I only connected with that, that pain, that thing at the weekend, because I've always thought it was stupid and a school thing and the learning thing. I would convince myself that it came from those experiences at school, in the classroom, but it isn't, it's this. And that is the one that really blew the whole thing out of the water. Right. But then I'm thinking, well, it's great. It's, it's linked to the future. And that's my, how <laughs> the hell do I deal with that? Because I'm going in that direction. It's not linked to the future. It's projected into the future. Yeah. And it's projected from a, the, the mind does two things with anxiety or we fear. It projects it um, and it protects it. So it'll say, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. And don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. So it protects it. And you're smiling. So what's happening there? All right. Yeah. There, like, yeah. It stops me doing it. It stops me. Yeah. I think about it and I get anxious. And then I try and squash it back down. I don't be stupid. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. But it just goes, no, no, this is going to happen. It's your Brilliant. fault. You're stupid. Why didn't you plan? People will think you're pathetic. People say you're pathetic. Well, of course you're going to get off. Why didn't you think about a pension? What? And it just goes <laughs> on, on. It's been relentless since that came up at the weekend. Fabulous. So all that I want you to see is that they're red herons. Yeah. That's just the mind protecting yourself from the threat that has birthed. So this threat has birthed in relation to this, and it sounds like death. Mm, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, and what age were you when you saw the ad? 10, 11? No, probably six, seven. Okay. So that's really, really powerful because you're not yet equipped to deal with the idea of death at six or seven. That's why developmentally it normally happens around 10 or 11. So you're not equipped. So you've had this shock, shock trauma in relation to what that is and what's happening in that. And this is primary pain, guys. It's the same thing. So we need to take the part, which is exactly what, so brilliant that you've done the first step, which is get into contact with it, which is what I'm telling everybody to do. Get into contact with it. See what it is. And that is fabulous. If you find your primary pain and your primary pain is this piece of trauma where you saw this woman dead, then what I would want you to do from that is I want you to understand and everybody else listen to this because this is really important. Julie, will I pull you up? Mm -hmm. So you didn't get much choice there, did you, Julie? You were just pulled out of the gallery sorry are you sure you're all right I just yeah, okay. are you yeah. sure right yeah um 
so uh, what I would like you to do and everybody else, if you can have the memory of the trauma, if you have the memory, you know, some of us do, some of us don't, but if you have the memory of it, fine. What was it that was important about that? What was it? And I'm not asking you to, there's a cup of tea going. <laughs> Somebody's bringing a cup up. I'm not asking you to tell me now, you're kind of trying to protect yourself, all right? So I'm asking you to think about it. I'm asking for everybody else that's watching this, I'm asking you the same. In that memory, right? In that time, what was the trauma? What was the difficulty? What was the pain? What was the, what, what was happening for you? How can, how can anybody be just left and die and it looked like, the, my version of it, it looked like the cat was actually nibbling at her and eating her, but it can't have been, but that was it because it was quite a, it was the, it was an advert basically asking people to check on the neighbours, but it was the poverty, it was the, she was yeah. alone, she was cold, she was freezing, she was dead and nobody noticed. And how would that be if you were totally on your own and you died in it? The there it is. I want yeah. you to stay there with me, right? How would yeah. that be? So see how that, that, how would that be? What would be the emotional experience of that? So in your young mind, you made up what that emotional experience would be like. Yeah. So be the worst thing. Worst, the worst thing. There we go. There we go. The worst. Yes. Yeah, but that's not, that's still not doing it for me. That doesn't describe the emotional experience you think she's experiencing. What do you think she's experiencing? Loneliness? And no, terror. There we go. Abandoned, neglected. There we go. There we go. You got it? Yeah. Well done, my love. Yeah. Got it? Mm -hmm. There it is. There's what needs healed. Yeah. Not the cat lady. But those feelings that you imagine she was feeling and the feelings that you're trying to avoid in the future you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Abandoned, forgotten, isolated, left, neglected, worthless. Absolutely worthless. There we go. You couldn't tolerate it, can't have it. Have yeah. to get away from it, have to protect it, can't have it, can't have it, have to protect it. That's what your mind's doing. Can I have it? I have to protect myself. I'm not, why aren't I protecting myself? I'm not fucking stupid. What's wrong with me? I'm not doing hard. I could be your mind. I could be what I could imagine your mind is doing to you. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you and then you have the same emotional experience, which is nervous system activation, and then you can't do anything. Yeah. Well done. So I'm just going to take you off camera, jot that down really quickly because it's really fresh, right? Yeah. <laughs> well done, my love. And sure, listen, we'll work with that. That's not a bother. All right. I'm going to let Julie write that down. And then if everybody wants to just open their mics. Um, well done. Thank you, Thank you Julie. Brilliant. Well done, Julie. 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 Completely impromptu. So um, thank you, Julie. And thank you for letting me lead that. And thank you for showing everybody else the importance of that. Shona, could I just ask a question? Please. Please. Does, when you talk about the distancing, um, can you describe ways that it's, you want to create that space between the when the wind was created and the now? Yeah. So, so go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying about um, you want to create that space. So would you? Can you give me some techniques that you would do or how you would do that? Is you? Is you? Are you trying to say other things that have happened that prove opposite or? No. No. All that you're doing is, all that you're doing is what will happen is if the wind is burst without awareness. Mm -hmm. which is what happens to most of us yeah, okay. right? yeah. When, the wind, when the wind is birthed without awareness the first thing that i got used to do this this week was to source why why source because if you source it's the beginning of separation yes because you go that looking. Sense? yeah you go looking yeah if yeah. you source it if you know it you're and you have a heads up so when it comes, you're not like, ah, it's, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I know you. 
That's yeah. why we spend so much time. Mm -hmm. There's a method in my madness. We just weren't doing things for doing things. We were doing things to get to this point yeah. where you mm -hmm. can see it coming. Mm -hmm. You can see it, the smell it, taste it, touch it. You know when it's so that you're not in it. Mm -hmm. And then thinking, what is happening? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? I don't understand. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all that separation does. And awareness brings that. And right. that's what happened to Julie. Julie was getting awareness on the wounds. She yeah. blamed stupid for her activation. But this week she was down on the primary pain, which was that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was causing the nervous system activation, which was causing her to call herself stupid. That was all the secondary pain. Am I understanding that, Julie? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. brilliant question, Monica. Thank you for allowing me to clarify that. Awareness creates separation. The awareness mm -hmm. creates it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the question. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Why do I get so excited about this? Look at the wee cheeks. <laughs> oh, very excited. It's very excitable. Hey, okay. right. Okay, so fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So the first thing that we have to do is create separation. That's how to heal it, right? Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of healing. And once you've created a separation, once you know what it is, it's like Tina knows what hers is now. Julie knows what hers is now. And we know it from being in contact with the experience of it. Does that make sense? We know it from being in contact with the experience of it. We know it's language, we know it's detail. We, we might know it's source yet. Now here's where we move on, right? So once I know it, once I know how it walks, once I know how it talks, once I know it behaves, and you know, it is of a character. Mine's, I would, if mine's of a character, I would give it like a black cloak that had a hood up, it would come whispering. And then it would just like kind of, throw a black cloak over me and go, ah, I got you now. Ha, 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 there's no escaping. So, you know, that's how Mayans would have walked. And, and I could have, I literally could have smelt it a mile away. I knew when it was lingering. I knew when it was triggered. And I started to create separation. Because when we create separation, we can start to do the healing work. Tina, is this making sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if, if we're like Tina and we have a memory, we're like Julie and we have a memory. Do you see what I did with Julie there now? She was talking about the cat and the cat woman and the cat eating the woman and, and, and what she saw. She wasn't talking about what she felt like. That was the difference. So what did... Sorry, Rebecca, I'll come to your question. And your question is so important, right? What did, what happened? Did you see the shift in Julie when she went to, I'd be lonely, I will be, I will be devastated. Do you see all the words that came? So, so there you are. I see you, David. Yeah. So there you are. You know, you're in this, you're in the detail of it now. So your detail last night, you know, was I can't do it. I can't do it. And here's the next thing for healing, right? The wound must die as it was born or it won't die at all. This is why affirmations miss the mark. This is why cognitive healing doesn't work. If the wound is I can't do, then you are brilliant, don't touch it. Does that make sense? Then you're so wonderful, you've got this. I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm worthy. Well, that one doesn't care. Were you pumping iron every day? It has a fabric of itself. It understands what you can't do. It understands why you can't do it. It understands, it's very specific. I'll give you an example. I worked with a client who had, there's something wrong with me, was the wound. So you would think then to heal that, you might work with, there's nothing wrong. Does that make sense? Everybody with me? 
but the wound was born in this way. There's something wrong with me in relation to them. It had two parts to it. There was no way that wound was going on its own or there's nothing wrong with me because it was born like, all these people are great. There's nothing wrong with me because I'm not great. And so the wound was always about somebody else. That's why affirmations can't heal that because it's not specific enough to the wound, which is why your language pattern in the wound is vital. If you get out the language pattern, that's why I, that's why I went for um, Tina's language pattern. I can't do it. I heard that really quickly. And I, and I kept saying, you see, if you watch back at that, I kept saying, you can, you can do, you can do. And you were really activated by I can do because I knew that it would, that it would start moving you because your mind would be going, you can't, you can't. What's she talking about? You can nod your head here and say, yes, but you bloody can't. And so really activating it. So for you, Tina, what couldn't you do? I'm not asking you now, we're going to work on a collective in this, right? Our next coaching call, me and you're going to do this, right? If you haven't done it before by now, what happened? What was happening to you? What did you believe about yourself? And if you remember the work that I did with Tina, I was starting to begin to ask her, what did she need to hear? What did she need to know? To soothe that wound in that moment. What does it need to sound like? And you could start to see her regulating in that moment. Does that make sense? And that's how the wound is healed. But the wound is healed with spe specificity. Hypnosis can help. Albert, a uh, uh, heal a core wound. Um, all the modalities help. There's not, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I'm just being really, really, you have to get really specific before you apply hypnosis. Because if you don't get specific, you're going to miss the target. That's just the way it is. It's just the way the stuff works in the body. So there's nothing that's not helpful. It just, yes, this is deeper and it needs to be deeper. And there's an awful lot of work. You know, accessing a memory is one thing, but working in the detail of that memory, working in the specificity of that memory, working in the felt sense of that memory, working in the nervous system activation of that memory. There's so many layers you're working on that, but it's also helpful. There's nothing that's not helpful. We're not throwing the, bib the baby out with the bathwater. So, how is that for you? So let me recap. Understanding what a core wound is, understanding what primary pain is, is your greatest ally. And just to go back to your question, Rebecca, can you still heal if you can't separate it? If you can't feel the wound, it's really hard to heal the wound, right? It's not impossible. It, there's three steps to that. If you can't heal a wound, if you can't feel a wound, there's three steps there. The first step to it is to reunify the mind and the body very, very, very gently. The second step is the unwrap. We don't have time here. Unwrapping is an entire process in of itself, right? You unwrap, which means you take away all of the, all of the, negative language around the emotion and the reason you unwrap which means you undo why you're disunified in the first place and that makes it very safe and then you learn to self-soothe or self-parent different words the reason that you're disunified is because you don't know how to regulate you don't know how to be so all that's a very kind of it's a very it's a very basic steps but they're really really important steps we have, and I'll talk about the Emotional Mastery Program when we're finished, because some of these may want to go to collective, some of these may want to go to Emotional Mastery, some of these may want leadership, you don't want different things, but like, we were working on, on unwrapping, David, this today, you, how important, I'm not asking you to talk about your own unwrapping, but how important did you, did you see unwrapping was today, especially for Rebecca, Rebecca who's, who's trying to get the wound. Yeah, just just huge, huge, and you you think it is the problem, yeah, um, but then you just go deeper into it, and you think, oh no, 
it wasn't it was just secondary and um yeah and the work that we done today on unwrapping seeing the noise that's around the emotion which is why we yeah. can't get to it there's too much pain yeah. around it yeah so it feels awesome. like a cloud was taken off the scene and i'm now the rest of the day i've been slightly in the scene and exploring the scene rather than just having a, a cloud around it yes that's yeah. what unwrapping does rebecca and that's exactly where you are you can't self-soothe brilliant rebecca brilliant so and because you can't self-soothe is not a reason for your your worthlessness there's a reason that you can't self-soothe because you probably weren't taught to self-soothe so you can't use that against you it's just where you are it's perfect it's fine and there's three steps that you get because see when you can regulate yourself see when you can self-soothe see when you can be okay with the emotions that were then then you can reunify and when you can reunify you can heal anything so it's all ahead of you it's perfect all right hopefully that helps really. donna it could it could uh, i share my experience yes Dion, if please. that would be okay please um I'm uh, a therapist and I, I'm i trained about 15 years. I've been in lots and lots of therapy, lots and lots of CPD, all the secondary stuff going on. And I felt the core wound after Monday night. It woke me up during the night and it was in my stomach and it felt like birth and pain. And there was a few synchronicities around it that led me to kind of connect the dots of um, where I'm at now. And even as I'm speaking about it, I can feel that nervous system, the whole body's going like jelly as I'm speaking about it. Yeah. However, the feelings that came up for me, and it wasn't even a memory, it was when I was doing my training, we had to do a piece on what our uh, birth experience was like to do a bit of research. And I was a breech baby and there was a lot of birth trauma. But in uncovering the research, it was that the baby stays close to the mother's heart because of the mother's emotional wounds. So therefore, it was a very traumatic birth on, on my mother. Um, it was very traumatic on me. My hips was dislocated, you know, trying to um, take me out, basically. Um, and I was born upside down. So excuse the expression, but I came out arseways. Yeah. And that's my core wound. That's what mm -hmm. I've been told every time i done something. Or she was born that way. She does everything that way. And, you know, like that's back in the womb. And even when you were saying birth, and it, just to say, I was getting a central nervous activation. I go see swimming. And I got took it up over the lockdown. And every time I got in the sea, I was like, why do I feel like I'm having a fucking panic attack? Self-soothing, self-talk, rubbing my body, holding myself, minding myself, going back into that water and just get up to here and couldn't immerse myself right under. If I was in the swimming pool in Spain, I'd be under. I'd be, it was... You know, it, it was like re-entering that womb. And the emotions that came up for me, even in that was, and not to blame, I don't do blame, I'm on in it. I felt let down. Yeah. I felt a huge wave of disappointment. I felt like that was a turning point and it, it was, I was able to connect the dots to it. I was in the wrong direction coming into the world. And I've been going in the wrong direction. And it was just like, it was profound. Now I'm in bits all day Good. and they got like a frozen dinner. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was a day of really going back to that core pain. And it started like with the birthing pain. <sighs> And I felt uh, like even agitated at some point. Then I allowed the anger to come up. And I, I just wrote down a few things on it. And it, the, like that stopped a natural process of coming out head first. 
you know, um, I used to kind of turn it around and make it a joke and say, oh, well, I came out leg sports style. You know, I always land on my feet. I don't always land on my feet. I'm all right, but in a sense of my leadership in the direction I want to go in now, I'm going head first and that's stronger within me than right. them emotions. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I can't thank you enough. Ah. Like, and you know, the, the, the irony of it is, and I have to say, this is a free CPD course. And, you know, the money I've spent, you know, and you've just come in and I've done this process and I can't thank you enough because I really feel like it's a new beginning for me. Good. Well, welcome. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to yourself. Thank you. The world will be a better place. Thank you. Your healing and so will your clients. They'll be damn lucky to have you. Well done. Look, here's your trap me. I can't be coping. Let's not do this often, eh? Thank you so much. So Thank beautiful. You. Thank you so much. Really Thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. Thank you so much Thanks. for sharing that. Um, I haven't had a conversation with Dion. This is our first conversation. Yeah. So she's yeah. not in any group. She's not in any program no. that I own. I don't, I you don't know you. You don't know. It just came name. into me life at a point in time where I was ready to give up Brilliant. and say, fuck it. And I'm not now. Incredible. Well done, you. Everybody Thank open you. their mics. Well done. Well Amazing. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's Thank you so much, Dion. Dion, you were amazing last night and you were as amazing and more amazing tonight so thank you this is what it happens when you work in the right areas guys yeah it isn't really rocket science yeah really? Dion, yeah you're sorry but i i feel very emotional listening to what you shared and um you know it just sounds like You've got truth, yeah. real truth. Yeah. And, yeah. And more power yeah. to you. And yeah. well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so sad Thank that you. you have to suffer your whole life for something that you didn't do anything wrong. And that's how these wounds work. That's the truth. The wounds work. We suffer, we hold these wounds and we turn them into secondary pain and we turn that secondary pain against ourselves and we kick ourselves around the place and it has to stop. Yes, Monica, she's coming home. <laughs> yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So how do you recover from that? Let's recap um, and all go home and have a cup of tea, right? <laughs> so the recap in this whole thing is exactly what you've just brought to light, Dion. That when we work in the right areas, we can free ourselves very quickly. And especially if you're able to work in the body, if you're able to be in the body, if you're able to be connected to the body, then you're able to be connected to the wounded parts of you. And from that place, there's great healing that can happen. The reason we took so long working and pushing at secondary pain is to get us to this place, to get us really close enough to the woundedness so that we could see the freedom from there. Some of these have lots of secondary pain which is fine some of you have lots of primary pain which i'm hoping that you now see the source as the secondary pain i'm hoping some of you have some leadership issues so self-leadership you know self-direction you know don't know how to get yourself forward don't know how to push yourself forward not so wounded but just have leadership issues from from growing and and, and flexing and being some of these may do's have some of those, you know, how do I get from A to B and what's the strategy and how do I, what's my focus and, you know, how do I use my personality for me? How do I create a future that I want? It's kind of more of a self, how do I, how do I get from, I've got from, from Z, D, D, B, how do I get from B to A? That's the leadership part, right? Some of these have that. And some of these have emotional mastery issues, which is that you're disconnected. Yeah, absolutely disconnected from your, your, your body, 
because there's a bloody good, damn good reason you're disconnected from your body. It's not safe to be in your body. And that work needs done first. Yeah. And that's fine as well. But either way, I hope this three days has shown us ourselves. Because when we serve ourselves, when we're at ourselves, when we're with ourselves, when we're in, 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 in contact with our pain, then, um, then we serve our clients much better. So yeah, so Carmen, I, I don't do one-to-ones, Carmen. My one-to-ones is closed. We, we, I don't have a one-to-one -one practice. I do have a one-to-one -one practice, but we had a four or five year waiting list that we had to shut down, had to shut the door, so it's ridiculous. So um, the only way that you can work with me, which I'll, I'll tell you now. So this, if you want to continue this journey, right? So we, if you want to continue in this format, what you've seen this in these three days is how our collective works. Our collective works like this, very powerful group work, right? It's exactly like this. Um, and that we work on core issues. So we have, it's called the collective and it's a collective for therapists who want to do their own healing work and who want to be led by me and supported by me in working on their primary pain. So if you've got what, if you've got some bits of the puzzle and you want to continue, or if you've got big chunks of the puzzle and you want to continue, then the collective might be, uh, might be an answer for you. There's some people on the collective here and they may speak to the collective. We've only opened the collective doors once. Um, the collective is a beautiful, beautiful space. Let me explain what the collective is so you know what you're jumping on the the collective is where exactly like this, where I deliver workshops, um, where I do group or, or do one do ones like I did with Julie or like I did with um, Tina, but they're much more intricate, right? And they're much more intricate because it's not a live platform. It's closed Facebook group therapy. Right? It's very safe, very controlled. So we can get on it deeper, get on it. Um, Yes, Helen, the collective is a wonderful group and a wonderful group of people. Now, the collective meets on from a therapeutic point of view, so live group calls, so one-to-one -one coaching, right? In a group setting, but you would, so say if it was Dion and you want to do work with that material deal, then you would show up and it's, it's not this Thursday, it's next Thursday, we, we meet on a Thursday evening, and me and you would work on a one-to-one -one basis while your colleagues sat around and supported you working at that level. Yeah. So we do two of those calls a month. And we do one workshop like this a month. But it's all in relation to core woundedness. It's all in relation to healing. You know, you can do it for CPD or you can do it for yourself. It, it's, up, it's up to you. But it really, I would encourage you to do it for yourself. You'll get much more out of it. The collective also has, um, when, once you get under the collective, right? It has this, I'm gonna share this, and this is gonna be wrong. Um, do you know what? I can't share it. I'm going, I'll, read, I'll read, read what it is. So there is a library of courses sitting waiting for you, right? And the library of courses, you feel I add love to everything, and not what I'm supposed to add is there. Self-esteem money course, the healing primary pain model. Why not enough is not enough to heal. Treating anxiety, working with, understanding, working with core wounds, emotional mastery for your family, so that's for your children, dealing with difficult feelings and the hierarchy of pain. So they're all a set of workshops that are sitting ready for you just to eat. Netflix binge on, right? They're all recorded, they're all set there. You just have full access to them. And every time we do something like this, like all of the collective members will have this for life. This is all part of their academy. They'll have all of the recordings of this. They'll have all the paperwork for this. So anything I do, the collective members get all of that, right? So you can do the collective in, in two ways, which, you know, Hillary did it for the year. So you can pay for the year, so a year's full uh, subscription, or you can do it monthly. We've, it, we've made it really, really reasonable to, so to support as many as we can. It's 180 pound for the year. I know it's nothing, right? 
or £19 a month. But you can end at any time. So if you get on it and you don't like it or it's not for you, you can just cancel. There's nobody, there's nobody going to come back. It's fine. So that's the collective. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful environment. And I want to keep it that way. Did you see the way this environment was over the last three days? There was no ego. There was no bolstering. It was just pure regard, empathy. The conditions were alive with, between all of us. And if you can bring those conditions, yeah? If you can bring all of those conditions to the grip, then you are more than welcome. But it is required that you bring those conditions because we are all in support of each other. And I am really firm about keeping the conditions alive in the group. If you feel it is, it is, if you feel that it's a fact, if you feel like you'd like to continue your journey, it's, you know, then come join us. There's two ways of doing it, a year subscription or the monthly subscription. It is entirely up to you. Leona will send you the details of it. And we are just opening up. This is our second time opening up the collective. So um, these are all more than more than welcome. For anybody that is shut down emotionally, is disconnected. The collective might be a wee bit hardcore at the minute for you, right? It may be, it may not be. You may want to do the both, I don't know. But we have an emotional mastery program, all right? And that emotional mastery program is, is a, it's a six week program. It's an intensive program. And it's about unwrapping. It's about giving you the self-soothing skills. It's about giving you the, the reunification skills. It's about unwrapping. And that is a different process, the, the, the collective, right? But that's to help you. Yes, Rebecca, I think you would love that, right? I think it would do you the world of good before the collective. Because the collective, you're going to have feelings hard and heavy. And it really might be too much. I don't, I don't know what the guys that did emotional mastery think. Yeah, Pia, you're more than welcome. Again, the link will go out for emotional mastery. All right, the emotional mastery course, we were running at 250 pounds for the six weeks, but it's it's we're putting it on at 99 pounds for this group. So that's the emotional mastery course, and it's six weeks. And then you're more than welcome to join. At, if you feel that it's a fit, you're more than welcome to join the collective after that. The last but not least is the leadership bit. If you think you have a leadership issue, I I don't do one to ones, but I do half days, half day intensives. They're they're like picking hands teeth, right? Um, and they're more strategic than they are emotionally deep. Yeah. So there, it's a more strategic thing. More, it's a more planning thing. It's a more, how do we get you from A to B? It's, it's more, I hate calling it mindset because it's not mindset, it's self-leadership. What's, what do you, what is blocking you? And, and that's a half day, it's intensive. And that's a different thing altogether. And there's very few of them, but if, if you wanted a one-to-one, -one, that's the only one-to-one -one offer. So some of them may work, some of them may not work. It is irrelevant. It's whatever fits and suits your world and suits your needs. I would love to see, if I'm honest, most of these in the collective and we could continue this journey. It would be so gorgeous to see these all there, I have to say. Um, so um, all that's left to say is I hope that, that my intention, which was deep, my intention was twofold, is to, is to spread the word about the knowledge that I have in order to serve you. And so how do I serve you? By letting you see primary pain and letting you see the freedom that can be accessed in primary pain. And I hope I've served that well over the last three days. I feel even sad. Um, I feel even sad saying bye-bye to um, So hopefully most of these will continue the journey and the collective. We, um, we'll be all I'm delighted to see these. Um, uh, I will see these again soon, hopefully. And that's all that's left to say. So do you know what I'm going to do? Because it has been much, much, I'm going to put myself under the gallery. <laughs> so I can see everybody. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. 
an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Says, I do loads of these, but this was wasn't this really different, Monica, this time? Yeah, it was absolutely incredible, Sean. I mean, I've done quite a few of your, I mean, I really have. The most of your mastery is incredible too. But this, I think it was just something so beautiful and warming and honest and true. And everybody was just amazing. So come on board the collective. It's, it's incredible. I think I need them all. I need to go on yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're really welcome. Sign me up for them all. I did. Yeah, the leadership. I love the leadership. Monica's one. done them all. That's why she's telling me. <laughs> Listen, uh, whatever you choose, it needs to be right for you. Um, and much love to everybody. And you were just the most fabulous group. You really were. We're just so Lots blessed. Love love to all you brave, you know, brave sharing your experience, your emotions and Make me, I feel so emotional. I just hope my son doesn't come home too quick so that I can process it all and have a quiet time because it's it's all this emotion. I'm, you know, like Dion, I just felt like I was there, you know, when you were talking and and um, Julie as well. I was just like, wow. Brilliant. These are amazing. Um, amazing, heart centered, good people that are doing great stuff in the world. It's why we do what we do, isn't it? It is why, it's we why do we're here. Do. We we care. We we care about people. We love people. We want them to live their lives mm -hmm. free from anything that's holding them back, any pain. We that's want to true. heal that pain. Mm -hmm. I can see that in you, Shauna. Yeah. You want to heal everybody. You know, you are amazing. You're awesome. And and that's why collective began. I wanted a place where I hang around with good people. <laughs> where I get to spend a Thursday night with the best people in the earth and, and the support is beautiful in that group and, and, and I get to design groups that you hang around with people that you would meet in the streets and have friends and have coffee with you know and I don't think there's enough support as honest to God I don't think there's enough support for therapists no it's so lonely it's what I keep totally, totally agree yeah, yeah it's just such yeah. a lonely place nobody understands your yeah. friends don't get it family don't get it nobody gets it <laughs> just and, <laughs> and if you get into other groups you're having to be professional you're not allowed to be yourself you're not allowed to be raw and authentic and real somehow that's not that's not professional when it is the it is the epitome of professional it is what why we do what we do so that's what the collective has been designed for anyway much love these all. It is Thank nine o'clock. I've had enough for me now. Um, well can done. I, I well done. Congratulations. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Thank you, Joel, the production team. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, 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 Thank